Okay. So that's really the bulk of what you kind of need to know to at least get around the command line without tripping over yourself, right? You know how to move through the file tree, you know how to manipulate files, which is kind of the basics of what you need to do. There's tons of other stuff you can do on the command line, like this is tip of the iceberg kind of stuff. Um, a lot of the command line stuff gets into stuff that's more advanced than we need to do. I will send out a list of commands you're welcome to use, I actually have it here. Uh, this is organized, has a whole bunch of useful commands on it, some of which you'll ever need. But there's a little synopsis of what they each do. You now got to use the man page. You can go to the man page for any of these commands and basically figure out how to use them. Um, if you can think of something you would need to do, there's probably a command to do it. Unix is very good at this. Part of the Unix philosophy as well is to keep commands so that each command does one thing and one thing only. Uh, and then you chain different commands together if you need to do multiple things. This is like real core Unix philosophy. It differs a lot from the way Windows and stuff does things. So there's commands to do things like sort all of the lines in a file alphabetically. There's commands to do things like uh, just show you the last 10 lines of the file, just show you the first 10 lines of the file, do all kinds of things like that. You can actually write some pretty powerful programs using just the terminal alone, without doing any real programming, right? Without using any C, without using any Python, without using any Java. You can chain a whole bunch of commands together and get a program that actually does some pretty powerful things. Um, this is called bash scripting. This terminal we're dealing with right now is kind of a one flavor called bash, the born again shell. Um, a lot of these commands we're using and, and some of the stuff we're talking about, I mean, a lot of it's generic, but you will see people talk about bash scripting. What they're talking about is basically programming using the terminal. Um, you also get to the point where you don't just have to type these commands in every time. You can put these commands into a file and then tell the terminal just to run all the commands in the file. And then it's starting to look a lot like Python uh, almost or something like that. We'll probably do a scripting session at a later date. Uh, if you guys are doing Python, Python is what we call a scripting language. It kind of behaves the same way. But before there was Python, before there was Ruby, before there were all these other scripting languages, there was bash scripting. And it still remains very powerful, especially for doing things like text processing or doing things like file processing, right? If you find yourself in a situation where you need to do a job like go through all of your music files and rename them all so that they have the year out in front of them or something like that, or go through all your music files and sort them into folders based upon the first letter of the artist, like, you can do that by chaining together three or four commands on the command line. I mean, you don't need to go write an entire program. People have written a bunch of little programs that do all the components, and if you hook them together, you can do very powerful things with them. Bash scripting is a topic completely on its own. I actually did some lectures on it last semester, and I'll put them on the website. I'll probably do some more this semester, if you guys want to hear it live, but there's some other basic stuff to cover first. Uh, we're getting near the end of our time for the evening. Um, and I want to open it up for some questions, if there are them. We'll be meeting next week, and we'll be talking about Emacs. So just as a quick teaser, gedit is fine and dandy, genie is fine and dandy, but in the real world, there are two big editors that most people use. One's called Vim, and one's called Emacs. Um, nobody uses both. You will pick one, you will learn it, and you will think anyone that doesn't use it is the spawn of the devil. Uh, and that's kind of just the way these things work. As it so happens, I'm an Emacs user, so I'll be teaching an Emacs session. And anyone who prefers Vim can stay home. Um, there's good tutorials online on both of these. I will try to find someone who knows Vim to come to the Vim lecture as well, because it's worth seeing both of them. I don't really associate with people that know Vim all that frequently, so it might take me a little while to track someone down. Um, but I'm an Emacs user, I'll teach Emacs next week. Emacs is a very powerful text editor, and it lives, I think I just have the it lives almost entirely on the command line. So unlike gedit, which popped open another window, this, the, the, my, my mouse, is still useless, right? It's faking me out by giving me these nice menus at the top. They don't do anything. They're just there. I don't know why. Um, but this is a text editor. It allows me to exit, edit files. It allows me to code. It actually gets very powerful. It'll do all kinds of things. It'll color code code. It does everything you ever want. You can compile from within it, and it'll show you where your errors are. It's, ridiculously powerful, that's why people criticize it. That's actually the main difference between Emacs and Vim. Vim is really more Unixy. it's small, it's lightweight, uh, but it doesn't do as much as Emacs. Emacs is big, heavyweight, but they're both very powerful editors, they're both good to know. Um, 
not only because they're powerful, but also because there will likely come a time in your computer science career when you log into a system that has no desktop. There is no mouse. There is none of this. All there is is a terminal. And you're going to need to edit a file, and your only choice is going to be something like Emacs. Um, so they're good to learn. Uh, they have a steep learning curve. But the sooner you start to learn them, the more you will learn to love them. Uh, is kind of the way it goes. Um, if you're going to be doing Windows or Java development for the rest of your life, you don't tend so much to use these. But if you're going to be doing anything else, uh, these are things that you tend to know. If you do Windows, you pretty much can only use Windows Visual Studio because Microsoft has bastardized it that much. Uh, if you do Java, same kind of thing. A lot of people use Java like big IDEs like NetBeans or like um, some of the other Java IDEs. But for pretty much anything else, uh, people tend to use these two editors. So next week, same time, different place. We're actually in the classroom that's right on the other side of this, the next hallway over, essentially. So it's like the mirror image of this classroom, but on the other side of this sector of the building. I'm going to stick around for a little while right now. Uh, like I said at the beginning, this video will be online later. I will also link to other videos that kind of go into more depth on this stuff. Uh, I will put up the command list, use the man page, start going through it. You know how to move around the file system, you know how to exit. So you're not going to get yourself that lost at this point. Uh, thank you. I'll be here for a bit. You can hit me up for one-on-one -on -one questions. Otherwise, Gable Center Reminder, I hope to see you guys next week if you want to learn about Emacs and more to come after that. Thanks a lot, guys.